welcome to today's Bible stories. Yes, last week I told you about the last good king of Judah, uh, Josiah. Today I will be telling you about his son. And since Josiah was the last good king, you should know his son was not a good king. So after Josiah was killed by uh, the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, the people made his younger son king, Jehoahaz. They made him king. But uh, after about three months, the Pharaoh came and, you know, captured him and took him to Egypt. Uh, there are a lot of people uh, in the Bible. They said he, he did not want uh, the son to revenge against him for his father's death. But the funny thing was he now made uh, the elder brother, Jehoiakim, king. Jehoiakim was not his name. His name was Eliakim. But after making him king, Pharaoh now changed his name to Jehoiakim. So he was known as Jehoiakim from then on. So he became king. He was 25 years old when he became king. And he ruled in Judah for 11 years. And he was a horrible, horrible king. He followed in the footsteps of Manasseh. You remember Manasseh, the grandfather of Josiah? And then Ammon, the father of Josiah, they were. He was a horrible king. There was nothing he did not do wrong. He was just doing all those nonsense things before josiah died uh jeremiah was the was the prophet in israel then he had become the prophet and that's why they said even when josiah died jeremiah wrote a lamentation for him bewailing that such a good king had passed on so early so jeremiah was prophet as uh, as at the time joachim was also king and then in the fourth year of joachim's reign God spoke to Jeremiah and said, get a scroll and write these words. He said, write these words and read them in the temple to Judah, to the whole of Judah and everybody that still comes to my temple to worship. He said, maybe they will hear and listen and repent so that the disaster I'm about to bring on Judah, I will not bring it if they repent. So God told him what to write about the coming judgment, about what Judah had done, how they had left him, how they had uh, uh, followed idols and everything, and that he is about to bring judgment. And he wrote exactly what the judgment will be, that the king, will, a king will come from Babylon and would destroy them and make all of them slaves. And he will burn down the whole of Judah and Jerusalem and it will not exist uh, for a long time and everything and they'll be taken into captivity away from their land and everything that that is his judgment so when he told jeremiah jeremiah called uh, his uh, his scribe that's like his secretary baruch so he called baruch he said sit down and let me dictate these things to you so jeremiah dictated everything to him and baruch wrote it down now it's it was a bulky scroll, not just one word. There were a lot of things. You know how step by step leading the story from when they left Exodus and everything and up to what God's judgment over them will be. So after writing it down, Jeremiah said, I am confined. We don't know why he was confined, but he said, I am confined. Some verses say, I am restricted from going to the temple. So he couldn't go to the temple, but he told Baruch, he said, when, they, when there is a fast, when the priests have called for a fast in Judah, he said that they go there and before the presence of everyone, read these words. So Baruch did that. There was a, the priest called for a fasting period. So the few people that still followed God in Judah, they came to the temple and then Baruch went there and he read out the words. And one of the people that was there was a man named Micaiah, his father, uh, uh, Jeremiah, I think, all these their names, <laughs> was an official in the king's court. So Micaiah heard these words and immediately he ran. He went to the palace and then went to the room where all the officials of the king, they were seated. The king was not there and he told them what Baruch had read. And they were like, what? They now sent for Baruch. Bring the scroll, come and read it to us. So Baruch came to the palace and he read out the scroll to them, read out everything. And they were like, the king has to know about this. And they told Baruch, 
was it Jeremiah that said these things? Baruch said yes. Jeremiah dictated and he wrote it down. And they told him, you and Jeremiah hide. Now that tells me they knew who the king was. They told Baruch and Jeremiah, I said, go into hiding, but leave the scroll with us. We will read it to the king. So they kept the scroll in a place in the chamber of one of the king's officials. They now all went to the king and they told him, ah, something has come forth to this, this, this from Jeremiah and everything. The king said, where is the scroll? Bring it, let it be read to me. So they went to get the scroll and the king's scribe, that's the secretary, read it. As he was reading it, they said, the Bible records as he got to the fourth column, was it the fourth or the fifth? The fourth column, the king just collected it from him, threw it into the fireplace and burnt it. In fact, there are records that said he actually said he is king. Nobody can remove him, not even God. You can imagine that. And he now sent people. He said, go and arrest Baruch and Jeremiah for me. But the Bible records that the Lord hid them so they could not find them. The Lord himself hid Jeremiah and Baruch. And then the word of God came to Jeremiah again and said, the scroll that Jehoiakim burnt, he said, rewrite it and add these additional words. Tell him. Because he and of his officials, they heard these things, but they did not even humble themselves. They did not repent. Jehoiakim too did not repent. He, he faced up to me, the king of uh, the, the God of heaven and earth. He said, tell him that everything I have said will happen to Judah will happen. He said, but to him, his punishment will be special. He said, he will die. And, and will not even have the dignity of a burial. You know, as a king, imagine a king not being buried. He said he will not even have the dignity of a burial. He said he, he will be killed. He will not even die peacefully. He will be killed in fetters, as in bound up in fetters and everything. That that is what will happen to him. And Jeremiah uh, dictated it to Baruch again and it was written. But the Bible did not tell us whether they read it in the temple again or not and yes this what this happened uh in the fifth year of Jehoiakim's reign the god first told jeremiah in the fourth year so by the time they wrote the book and everything it was already the fifth year when they read it then they had to rewrite it again Fine. the judgment still took another six years to happen but it happened exactly as god said it will happen nebuchadnezzar the king of babylon invaded judah broke down everything, burnt down the temple, took them as slaves. We remember that that was how the issue of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and Daniel came up. And for Jehoiakim, he was bound up and Nebuchadnezzar carried him away from Judah. And along the way, he killed him and threw his body away, just disposed of it like that. Jehoiakim never was buried. He's is the only king in uh, record who was never uh, buried. Even Ahab, as horrible as Ahab was, Ahab still had a funeral. You know, Jezebel was the one that dogs ate her dead body, but Jehoiakim was never buried. And his body was just disposed of. Maybe wild animals ate it, maybe decayed, whatever. And that's how God's judgment came to pass. And what do I want us to know here? When God's word comes to us about something we are doing wrong, please repent. Even Ahab, as horrible as he was, when God sent the prophet to him to tell him what his judgment will be, Ahab humbled himself and God told the prophet, he said, did you see how Ahab humbled himself? He said, go and tell him that these things I said will happen, will not happen in his lifetime, that he will go to his, his death without seeing such horrible things. That was Ahab, who was one of the worst kings ever humility repentance is one is something that is so precious to god whenever we repent he is just to forgive so god will give us a humble heart that listens to god and changes our ways and i'll see you again next week god bless you